So, good morning, or we're here now in the testing room. We're going to go through some of the live testing. So, um, we're just going to go through a quick demonstration on some of the live testing. And today I've been joined by my able assistant, uh, Mr. Sal, who's here to help us. Good so, morning. What happens, and we are doing the social distancing because we're in this COVID period. So, what we're going to do is just go through some of the live tests that you need to go through when you're doing the test room. So, this is the live test part of the sequence that we're going to go through now. So, Mr. South will just explain to us what he's going to do with this bit and then we'll have a quick look. Okay, so we're going to start off with the incoming polarity, so the live polarity, so the polarity of the incoming supply. And as you can see, we've got the tester set to the volts. We only need two leads for this test. Okay, so we are, we've plugged them in, we've made sure that they're secure, and we're going to be testing at the incomer. So we're going to be testing between the line conductor and the neutral okay, conductor. So putting the least dangerous one on first, onto the neutral, onto the live. We're expecting it to be 240-ish volts, nominal voltage of 230, and that's exactly what we've got. So we're happy with that. Now taking the live one off first, up to the earth. Okay, and we've got less than 10 volts on this tester, which is the same as zero for most. Off the neutral, onto the live, okay. And we've got 245 volts. Live one off first, because that's the dangerous one, earth off. So we've now checked our polarity of incoming supply, and it's good to go. Okay, so we're gonna do our ZE test now. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the supply back on, so we've got something to do. And we know that we need to disconnect the main earth because we don't want any parallel paths when we're doing this test. We only want to test the value of the line conductor and the incoming earth. So we're putting the crocodile clip on there. We're giving it a good squish. We've used the back of the jaw because that gives us a better grip. We've set our tester to LPE and Z. So at the moment we've got no voltage on there. Automatically, this tester, when I put the probes on there, so the, lock, the neutral on first, then the line, don't need to press test. It recognises that it has voltage and automatically it starts to do a test. You have to hold the probes nice and still and you should get a result any minute now. Okay, so taking the line off first, the neutral off last, then remembering to turn that off to reconnect our main earth. So we've now done our ZE. I'll just have a quick look at the reading that you've got from there. So we've got 0 0.6. Now, the light, that's it. So Remember what I was saying about the fact that this is a TNS system on this one. So it's, although this building is TNCS, we're taking it as being a TNS. So our maximum value would be 0.8. So we're within that parameter. Okay, so now we're gonna do our prospective fault current. So the prospective fault current is going to be two different tests. The first test is the prospective earth fault current. So we've got it set with the same setting that we had for doing our ZE test. We've got it on L and PE on this particular tester. Okay, so this time we've got the main earth connected. So any bonding is going to be taken into account. So we've got all of the parallel paths because we want the worst case scenario for the amount of amps that's potentially going to fly. What's your, what's your tester set to, Mark? Just add in this. So it's set to LPE and Z. Okay, thank you, LPE and Z. Okay, so we're going to put the onto the earth bar, onto the neutral. And again, test that automatically should detect the voltage and give us a reading. Okay, at this time, what we're interested in 
is the amps. So previously with the ZE, we were looking at the ohms at the bottom of the screen. At the top of the screen, we've got 500, sorry, 452 amps, so 0.45 kiloamps. Okay, so that is our prospective earth fault current. Now, we're going to adjust the setting on the tester to live neutral, still leaving it on the Z on this side, and we're going to test our prospective short circuit current. leads. So we, I'll show you that again there. That one was much quicker. Okay. So we've got 288. So we've got a very different reading on that. If I do it again, right at the top, as I put the probes on, you'll see that it says two and high. So it's indicating that the short circuit perspective fault current Perspective short circuit current test is actually using two leads only. So two and high means it's a higher current and it's much quicker therefore. So as I put it on, you'll see it goes to two high. And you can see that that's a much quicker reading than when we did it on the perspective earth fault current. The higher of the two readings is what we use for our perspective full current on our test certificate. Having completed our ZE and our PFC testing, we can now do our ZS testing, so the total earth fault loop impedance. So we've set the tester back to LPE. Okay, we're still on Z. And we're gonna go and we're gonna turn on the socket circuit, which is labelled as being <coughs> that one. What we're looking for is the reading that we're going to get. This is going to take a while, but we're going to do each of these sockets. Okay, so we've got one ohm, so that's quite high. Right, I'm guessing that these ones are off a different yeah. So, yeah. So we've got more on that one? No, so we haven't got more on that one. So we've only got two on that one. So we've got one ohm being the highest result. So one ohm is what we're going to be calling it as our ZS. Okay, cool. so. so now we're going to do our RCD test. We've got it set on auto. We've got it set for 30 milliamps. Okay, the auto is going to do the half times, the one times and the five times. It's going to do the one times and the five times on both sides of the sine wave. So on this tester, we will have five tests. So we're going to turn on the main supply, we're going to turn on the circuit, and when we turn on this, then it will hopefully tell us that we've got voltage. Press test once, and after that, because it's on auto, it will do all of the tests automatically. All we need to do is remember to reset the RCD. It's now finished. So we need to look at our results. I'll just turn that off. Okay, so we can see on the half times we've got greater than 1999. So the RCD did not trip at half the amount of current that would make it trip. Then at 30 milliamps, we've got 27.1 on naught degrees on the sine wave and 36. 
zero on 180 degrees. So for our one times 36 milliseconds is gonna be our highest. Moving on to the five times, we've got 22.3 and 16.7. So 22.3 is the result that we'll put down for our five times. So, and if you want, if you forgot what those tests were, you can just scroll through using this button and that gives you your results.